All projects start off with an idea. Mark Hastings came to me and said, why don't we fly the Scan Eagle during the spring time frame? This was about January. The ideas percolate into action, and we started actually putting forward a plan to fly the Scan Eagle near and around the town of Oslo during the flood period in March of 2010. Some of the tougher items to get are the airspace. A COA, Certificate of Waiver or Authorization, is probably the toughest thing to obtain for a UAS, unmanned aerial system, to fly in the NAS, the nation's airspace system. In order to fly a UAS outside of a warning area, a prohibited area, or a restricted area, is to be within a COA by either being chased or with ground-based visual observers like you'll see in the video. The hard part is getting the COA, going through the normal process with the FAA, the long uh, duration of research, the uh, long waiting time frame. That had to be started early, so time was of the essence and the clock was against us. Once we received the COA officially from the FAA, that was an exciting day. It was put through in an expeditious manner, so we received the airspace that we needed to fly this operation. Uh, the COA then allowed us to fly at or below 1,200 feet AGL within a container about eight and a half miles east to west to about 11 miles north to south. Now we had free reign to essentially move our equipment where we needed to in order to launch and recover the aircraft uh, free of the flood waters. This was a very, very monumental landmark for a university to fly a UAS in the NAS. An important issue to note, if Doug Marshall had not been in San Diego during a conference with the FAA and literally speaking real time, a one-on-one -on -one interaction with the FAA, I really doubt we would have got the COA as fast as we did. So a lot of credit goes to Doug Marshall for being in the right place at the right time to help with the COA process that we received it uh, as fast as we did. The whole idea was to fly during the Oslo flood to provide research of the ice formations of the Red River. Uh, how the waters grew over land and how it disperses and as they receded after the flood period. We partnered up with FEMA and NOAA to provide an avenue of research to fly our UAS in ACOA. The, uh, the PI for the project, Mark Askelson, has a certain budget to provide defense assistance to civil authorities. In, in a time of disaster relief, let's say, in this case being the flood. You could, you could work this kind of operation for a volcano or for a forest fire or the aftermath of a Katrina or a hurricane. You're gonna put an aircraft where you don't wanna put man in harm's way in a manned flight. You also have the duration of a UAS where you can stay on site for a long period of time where aircraft are eventually gonna run out of fuel and have to land. The planning stage started probably mid-January, and from there, after submitting the COA, uh, Mark Hastings and I made uh, numerous trips on site. Uh, Mark visited with the landowners, so we had landowner permission to be on site to launch and recover the Scan Eagle, where there were no trees or, or power lines to be a hindrance to the launch and recovery. And that's a critical piece, is to have a good partnership with the local uh, community and the landowners. We had 30 different organizations we had to work with, from local law enforcement to the mayor of Oslo, um, safety department inside our own organization we had to work with. Those are just a few of the 30, and I believe it was almost 45 briefings we had conducted before the first flight on March 23rd. A formal briefing then was conducted to the university uh, leadership um, the dean, and some of the local uh, authorities uh, from Polk County, from FEMA, from NOAA, and uh, from our own uh, public affairs. That way everybody was on board with the overall project. Uh, everybody from the pilots and the crews to the media to public relations, all the right people were in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. 